Hi, my name is Mr. E. As we've discussed in previous videos, liberal democracies today are given structure and order by the idea of representative politics. Elected officials that are chosen by people to make decisions on their behalf. However, this is only one side of the coin when it comes to the organising elements of modern society. The other half is known as bureaucracy. You may have heard this term. The bureaucracy is responsible for the administration and official matters of society that aren't directly connected to elected officials, your politicians. Bureaucrats still are very much influenced by politicians, but not directly. We'll get to that. But what do I mean by official matters? Now, think of the army and defence force and its many hierarchies, or the public servants in a local council or state government structure, or park rangers within national parks, or maybe the judges in your local courts. Now, these people hold official positions in society, but in a stunning turn of events in this democratic world, they weren't voted into these positions. They acquire them professionally or officially. But why? And how did they get there? And why are they necessary? My name is Mystery. For reasons unknown, I have been thrown back into the past almost a hundred years. And this is my story. Bureaucracy, or bureau, in French means office. So in a broad sense, anything with an official societal function outside of the glitz and glamour of political life can be encompassed by the idea of bureaucracy, or part of the bureaucratic machine, synonymous with the idea of the state. But why have official positions in a society not democratically chosen? Well, the intention of bureaucrats in the 21st century is that they would have the skill and professional industry accepted training and knowledge in their position to carry out their role with such expertise that the impact of their decisions is consistently in line with the public interest. Meaning there is no need for democratic scrutiny where the role and function of a bureaucrat is foremost and always to the public good. So where did this state organising come from though? Well, you guessed it, we're going back to the age of revolutions. As absolutism was the way of feudal society, meaning all power and decision making was centralised. And as feudalism got increasingly complicated as the world changed from the Dark Ages onward, changing socially, economically, geographically, etc. Kingdoms had ever increasing needs for record keeping and system management. So in steps professional managers of official business to help order and organize complex kingdoms. Now obviously these persons were from the upper levels of society because they needed literacy and education. So is the tradition of bureaucracy. It's ties to the power structure of society, but most importantly, it's ties to powerful people. As the age of revolutions changed the world into its current bourgeois or middle class state, this bureaucracy would not disappear, but would develop and become ever more integral in organizing an increasingly complicated, liberalized and industrialized world. So with the fall of kings did bureaucracy lose its ties to the powerful? Absolutely not. Bureaucracy by its nature is not democratic. Let's take local government, your local council bureaucracy, for example. Now this also applies to, you know, the post office, uh, public transport systems, utilities, communications bodies, etc. But in local government offices, you have a general manager at the top then directors underneath that, and then managers, and then your lowly bureaucratic officers themselves. Now within this power structure, the delegation, or the vital decision-making power, goes to the managers, directors, and general managers. Now, do these people 
have their position based solely on their expertise in their field and their credentials. No, they are there because the elected officials, the politicians, choose the high-ranking bureaucratic officials that make important decisions. Accordingly, if you're a high-level bureaucrat, let's say, who aligns with one political party's ideals more than another, despite your merit, you are chosen for what you will deliver the politicians who picked you. That's why when you have a change in political parties after an election, one of the first orders of business for that new political party is to gut out and replace the public service with their own high-level bureaucrats. Bureaucracy by virtue exists to fill in the gaps of society where elected officials are not required or where expertise is paramount to mitigate conflicts in a society. Basically, things that need to be regulated to keep up standards. Think the legal system or building standards or health systems, etc. However, bureaucratic expertise can and is completely sidelined by political interests. The official positions of society, the bureaucracy, are infiltrated by political influence, with public interest being secondary to that. Now, some of you are romantically thinking right now, ah, yes, but the politicians represent the public interest, so that balances it out. Well, I ask you then, why are politicians lobbied by and donated to by industry and business. It's not just because they pass laws, but because they pick those who regulate standards in society, the bureaucrats. So the next time you are driving down the motorway and racking up 20 plus dollars a day in tolls, driving to and from work, thinking why the hell am I paying to use a a road for anyway. I pay taxes for this. Shouldn't some public road authority make this road for everyone to drive on freely? Spare a thought to politics and bureaucracy, the inextricable relation between bureaucrats granted the power to make decisions in the public interest, coupled with politics and business interests. All of these forces combine to bring you the building blocks of societal structure here in the 21st century. Now, if this got you thinking and questioning, please like it and share it with someone who needs to hear this. If you have any opinions of what has been said, please comment below. Let's get people thinking. And until next time, remember, I am. You are, we are, a mystery. Thank you.